Okay. Hello and welcome to the uh, Golden Gate webinar. First of all, I want to make sure that we don't have any technical problems and therefore uh, uh, it would be nice if someone has technical problems, uh, just write it in the group chat. There's a group chat down there where you can click on it. And uh, the group chat is used for all the technical problems during this webinar. So just tell us if there are any technical problems. Um, also, there's a, a Q&A section down there. This is used for content-wise questions. And uh, my team and me are happy to answer any questions. Um, also, there, there are some more features uh, here in this uh, webinar. For example, you can find a resource list. And there you can find the Slack channel, which you can join for, for answers after the webinar. You can find a handout which we already prepared for you uh, to recap everything I'm telling you today. Um, we have some protocols for the lab and an overview um, for, for the, the Golden Gate cloning. Um, okay, uh, just to, to myself, I'm uh, René. Uh, I'm currently working in, at the Monk's Clark Institute in Marburg, in the work of, well, in the group of uh, BS app, and um, I am an IHM alumni. I participated in 2016, 17, and I was the instructor of the last year's IHM Marburg team. And this year, I'm um, I'm the uh, ad advisor of um, of the IHM Marburg team. And uh, yeah, that's it to me. And now we want to start. Um, with, uh, with the webinar. And um, first of all, I want to give you an overview of uh, what we are uh, discussing today. And uh, the first thing is, um, or the first section is about uh, uh, why uh, you should use Golden Gate, what are the applications, what has been done before, and the general modular principle and um, the second section is about um, the 101 of Golden Gate with the enzymes which are used at different level, the detailed modular cloning, but we will explain that. Um, then we come to a section how this actually works in your lab, um, what you need, what, uh, what the protocols are, and we go through every protocol. Then we will have a big break. Uh, for about five to 10 minutes. And um, that afterwards, we will go more into detail and have a practical part where we go into different softwares and um, go through a complete cloning workflow. And if you have like specific applications or questions afterwards for your design, for your toolboxes, or for your chassis, uh, we can go through the, this uh, later on. Also, between every section, we will make a small break and um, to answer your questions. So use the Q&A for, for your questions. And between every uh, section, we will have a break. And uh, we will try to answer your questions in between. But the big questions, which are important for everyone, uh, we will answer in this break. OK. Um, Let's come to the point why you should use Golden Gate. Golden Gate is very modular. You will see why, why it is so. And you can have modular designs with uh, exchangeable parts. And this is especially useful if you have applications like metabolic engineering, uh, gene cluster re refactoring, something like that uh, in mind, or what if you want to do something like that. Because there you have to express a lot of heterologous uh, genes. And if you also want to express them in a different or in a fine-tuned manner, then uh, it's very, very useful to, to have these modular designs. The advantages, advantages of these, these methods is that you can uh, clone up to 24 parts in a one-part reaction. And uh, what a one-part reaction is, uh, we will explain later. And also, uh, you can avoid C 
sequencing for for all the contracts if the basic parts are sequenced. So um, this saves you a lot of time. This saves you a lot of money, and the same is uh, is true for for primers. So if you have your parts in your library, then you that then there's no need to order every time new primers for your for new designs. For example, if you want to adjust the expression. Also, the the method is uh, can is very uh, applicable for high throughput applications, and um, um, uh, this also means that um, uh, you can automate the whole process of um, of going gate more clo uh, to uh, cloning. And we'll also have a slide on that um, later on. Okay. So what has been done before? The most important paper here is uh, like the first one uh, from uh, Weber and Mayonet from 2011. But at that time, it was not very famous or very, uh, very much used in other labs because it was quite complicated and uh, people didn't understand it from the beginning. And um, yeah, it was based on many, many vectors, and uh, the toolkit was very, very large. And um, in the beginning, it needed time to be adapted. And then the people made new toolboxes out of it. And uh, today, you can find uh, a Moclo or a Golden Gate based toolbox for every organism uh, you can think of. And uh, I want to mention just uh, some of them. Uh, which you could all potentially also use in your project. Uh, and this, that's something I want to highlight especially. So the first toolbox is, of course, um, one of the most famous ones is the uh, E. coli toolbox, the Ecoflex, but there are also some, some more for E. coli, where you can assemble uh, pathways or uh, uh, different protein expression different expression level with different promoters, different RBS. And um, all these parts which are in this toolkit are characterized, so you exactly know what kind of expression you get from which part. And um, this is just one example, but um, um, yeah, there, there are many more out there, but Moakley is especially adapted to uh, for plant people. So all the photosynthetic uh, chassis, all the people which are using them have uh, decided on one standard. And uh, there's this open plant community which shares tools and parts. And they uh, like sat together, decided on a standard for, for the, the plant or photosynthetic organism cloning. and. Um, Therefore, for, for example, cyanobacteria, chlamydomonas, uh, different uh, plant chassis, you have already toolboxes and parts which you can use in your project, uh, which you ju just order at Edgene or uh, wherever you want to order them, also for at the Open Plant website. And uh, I think the, the plant people or the photosynthetic organism people are the, the best example of uh, standardizing uh, standardizing parts and using Moclo. Another famous example is the, the yeast toolbox, and uh, this is especially useful for, for baker's yeast. And uh, this fo doesn't follow uh, the, the Moclo standard, like the, all the uh, standards I told you before, but all the yeast people decided on that. So uh, if you ask these labs, uh, you can also share your parts with them. And um, yeah, this, this toolbox also contains many different promoters or terminators, also Cas9 um, tools. And um, yeah, this, this is very, very helpful. I already worked with the, with the yeast toolbox uh, in, in some of my projects before. And um, from my experience, it's uh, very easy to, to use and um, very useful. Okay. 
Now, I, uh, this is like just an overview uh, for chassis, but of course there are many, many more. So you can find toolboxes for mammalian cells, for for Pikia, for Yarovia, for uh, a lot of uh, organisms and uh, even mitochondria or yeast or, or uh, chloroplasts. Um, you can already find existing toolboxes for your projects. Um, now I want to come to a point uh, which I want to mention a little bit, but I don't want to go into deeply deeply into it. And that is uh, that there are two types of, of this modular cloning. Uh, the one I already talked about uh, in all the toolboxes is the left one, which is the hierarchical cloning. So you're building up complexity of your constructs in every level. And I will explain that in more detail. And then you have like the iterative way of cloning that you're just adding one component in one cycle and then uh, uh, you repeat that process for for every part you want to add. So both have, have advantages. The right one, the, the iterative, the loop assembly, has the advantage that it's very, very easy to adapt. You don't, you just need a few plasmids to, to adapt this. But the disadvantage is that you, every time for adding new parts, you need a, um, yeah, a, a whole cloning cycle. The right one is more complex. You need more knowledge. You need uh, more parts or, or vectors of before. But therefore, you can build up uh, complex multi-gene plasmids uh, in a few steps. And um, yeah, for the rest of the presentation, I'm focusing more on the on the left on the left part. But if you have questions on the right part, part then just tell me and. Um, I would. I'm. I hope I can answer your questions. Okay. So, just the 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 basic principle or the uh, the the way how the people think of Moklo. So it's not based on this classical vector insert thinking. So many people in biology think like that, and it's hard to. Uh, convince people which are using that uh, for, for years and um, uh, you have to like get used to, to the uh, thinking but uh, yeah we think in, in modular cloning or in, in Golden Gate we think in, in parts uh, which are called level zero and uh, level zero part is for example a promoter a RBS the terminator so you divide the, the, the original password in many many small parts which is which uh, are composed of one functional element. And they are stored in one standardized backbone, and we will come to that later, but uh, this backbone, uh, yeah, it's also uh, the, the people decided on that backbone to have like a standardized backbone for, for all the genetic parts they want to store. Then you can assemble with, with the, uh, within the level one, a whole transcriptional unit, which means expressing one gene. And uh, you're, you're just uh, putting together a lot of level zero parts to a level one part, or like a level one unit. And these can afterwards be used to assemble multi-gene uh, plasmids. So this is the principle that you uh, you divide the, 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 the plasmid into level zero, then you build up level one, and then level two. And um, but uh, don't worry, we will explain that uh, a lot in this in this webinar. Okay, so n now uh, it's time for the the first break. Uh, just post uh, some questions if, uh, into into the Q and A. I will wait perhaps a minute or something like that uh, to answer your questions, and if not, I will just continue. Okay, looks like that every everything is clear, which is, is not, which is nice. <laughs> okay, the next section is the 101 of uh, modular cloning, and uh, the 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 most important part is to understand the restriction enzymes. So, most of the restriction enzymes you are used to, uh, 
uh, if you haven't used Golden Gate before, are type 2 enzymes. What does this mean? So restriction enzymes have a, bi uh, a recognition site, and the, the classical type 2 enzymes, they bind at their recognition site, and they cut inside the recognition site. For example, echo R1, one of the biobrick enzymes. And um, therefore, they create this sticky end, and you can use that for the classical vector insert uh, cloning. So now this is a very uh, important point. Um, we come to the to to the, the, the enzymes we, we are using in Golden Gate. So these are type two S enzymes, and the difference is that they have a recognition site where they bind, but they cut, cut outside uh, of their recognition sequences which you can see on this picture here. So binding at the recognition site and cutting outside, uh, no matter, or it doesn't matter what the base pairs are at these, um, uh, or what these base pairs are where the enzyme cuts. So you can decide or design uh, the, these four N base pairs for your cloning assembly. And this is very crucial so binding recognition side, cutting side outside. And this is true for BSA1, which is uh, the most famous Golden Gate enzyme, but you are, uh, you are also using different different ones, and we come to that later. But another Golden Gate enzyme is the BSMB1, and they just differ in one base pair. Also the same principle, recognition side and um, cutting side. OK. <laughs> OK. So um, what what is the application of that, or what what can you or what can you use that that uh, that property of this enzyme? Just imagine you have a part, and um, if you have a recognition site uh, next to it, and you cut it, then one way of of cutting is that um, the recognition site of the enzyme is gone after you cut with the enzymes. And this is very important to understand for this, uh, for this cloning method. So after cutting and ligating, the recognition site, as you can see here on the picture, is gone if the recognition site is placed outside of the part. So, um, and this is then be used to standardize these, these four N base pairs uh, for every part you want to uh, combine. And, uh, for sure that you can also invert this uh, this um, recognition site, um, but this is not so many times used in, in this own gate uh, assembly, but I just want to mention it because we will use that later on. And for example, if you invert this recognition site and put it next to the part, then you can cut like to the left side and then the recognition site is still sticking to the part. This is not the, the common case and not uh, used for the standard golden gate, but you can use that for special application, which we'll explain uh, uh, later on what these special applications are. Okay, so this is the important part. I hope you, you can follow me on, on this explanation. If not, just ask in the Q&A. Um, okay, what, what can you use uh, this, uh, the special cutting properties for? You have, uh, people decided on standardized four base pairs for every part. Uh, and here you can just see like an overview what the people decided for the plant, uh, plant, plant assembly. And for example, in the beginning of, um, of the coding region, you have something, I don't know if you can read it, but it's uh, AATG. And this is the four base pairs which the uh, recognition side of your uh, of your enzyme is creating. So this one. So these four base pairs are represented in this uh, overview uh, here. So you have uh, one on, on the beginning of the part and a different, uh, different four base pairs at the end. And therefore, you can decide the order of your assembly and every time use the same uh, restriction enzyme. So between every part, you have this BSA1 which is cutting and uh, ligating by by these uh, four base pairs, uh, which are standardized for each part type, so to say. So 
So this is very modular and you can exchange parts very, very easily and you can uh, exchange parts with other groups, which is very, very useful if you, if you have a library. And um, it's kind of the same thinking than the, the Biobrick uh, registry. Um, just one uh, quick comment. So you can also see this M1, M2, M3. So this is uh, just a uh, fusion site which the last year's IGEM Marburg team uh, added to that standard. So the user standard is from A1 to uh, C C1, and we added the M1, M2, M3, and I will explain why we did that later on. And that, on that uh, re uh, standardized recognition sites, people build up toolboxes. So then you can find uh, uh, like different part types which are connecting which you can see in the uh, in that uh, image here so and to assemble one plasmid you just have to go from far left to far right so you have to connect every part so that there's no gap in between and then it's uh, like uh, very easy so for example connect the connector to a promoter to a rbs to a coding sequence the terminator connector and marker again and um, this will circularize but in the end you can choose for every part type your special or like your intended promoter and then you can uh, exchange that part very very easily uh, by just building a new plasmid with a different one and um, that's the basic principle of it that we have libraries of every part type which are characterized and we can assemble uh, in that way. Okay, so uh, now just a little bit more details uh, on each level. So we have the level zero, which are the basic, the basic parts, and uh, this means, for example, a promoter, something like that. And we have them in that universal acceptor vector, which I uh, explained in the beginning. And the the vector has some uh, properties. Uh, which the people decided on uh, for, for, for this basic part, except the vector. And this is that you have uh, clomphenical resistance. So every level zero part has um, clomphenical resistance in most of the toolboxes. So, so there, there are some out there which have uh, different ones, but a lot of have, a lot of have clomphenical. And uh, there's the high copy ORI. And then the, you can see this uh, superfolder GFP, and this is an expression unit for E. coli. Why would we have a GFP inside there? So the reason for that is that uh, you can select for colonies afterwards, uh, which have the original backbone or your new, new insert. So the, the wrong colonies are green afterwards, and the right colonies are white because they don't have the GFP anymore. And then you have like these two restriction enzymes, a cutting sites there, the BSMB1 and the BSA1. And the BSMB1 is the more inside one. And uh, you can see that after in the practical part, but uh, you use the BSMB1 for um, for creating new level zero parts. So you're cloning with BSMB1, and then you have the BSA1 for the level one assembly afterwards. And uh, to create these parts, you have to make sure that uh, they are free of both of these uh, enzyme recognition sites, BSA1 and BSMB1, to prevent unwanted cloning um, in 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 uh, yeah in in your in your unwanted cutting sorry unwanted cutting in your part. Okay, and then you just assemble it by a level zero uh, golden gate reaction, which we we'll explain in the lab part. Okay, the next level is the level one, which is one transcription unit. And um, there you assemble uh, many parts from level zero, which diff with different level types, uh, level zero types, to uh, in level one part to level one. And uh, it's high, highly modular, and you can do library cloning. And uh, the next slide will be about library cloning, but first of all, you have this uh, ampicillin uh, uh, resistance on there, also high copy. And um, 
there's also this RFP. Why do we have this RFP? So the, the, the same application as for the, uh, the GFP, the, the problem here is that if you put all parts together, uh, that when you transform them, you want to avoid that just that we just have the empty vector here, and therefore we can uh, screen for non-red colonies. So therefore we have the RFP, which is uh, E. coli expression unit for RFP in there, and then it's replaced by all your parts you're putting in. And uh, for most of the level zero parts, we are switching the antibiotic resistance from clomphenicol to ampicillin. So um, um, therefore you can uh, uh, prevent that you transform your, all your uh, level zero parts after, if they are not correctly assembled and you just get your level zero parts. That is why we are every time changing the antibiotic resistance uh, antibiotic resistance on, on all, all the levels. And the same uh, the same is done for the uh, or the, 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 the same principle is used in the level two assembly where we act, uh, assembling multi-transcription units, so multi-genes, then we also have like canamycin resistance, so again, switching the antibiotics and the RFP. And the assembly of transcription units in the level two assembly is done by so-called connectors in our case. So there are other ways to do that with different backbones for, for each position, what we in Marburg and also, for example, the yeast toolbox decided on these connectors. And they work like that, that you have, for example, at the end of the first transcription unit, the three prime connector two, and this is fitting to the five prime connector three. So just counting one up. So, and uh, uh, yeah, this is very easy. For example, the three prime connector three is fitting to five prime connector four. And that's where you can assemble this transcription unit by compatible uh, connectors. And we also have another cool feature about these connectors. So we, we, gave them some new functions. For example, uh, yeah, switching the direction of every transcription unit. You can choose, as you can see on the right uh, bottom side uh, picture, you can switch the direction of the transcription unit, which is especially useful in bacteria such as chassis because there you have something like read through that your transcription is uh, read through the terminator and then you would activate uh, the second gene expression, which could be bad in your in one some of your designs, and therefore we uh, enable this uh, turning of a transcription unit. And we also have, uh, for example, connectors which are insulators, which are insulating every transcription unit, or we have standardized uh, barcodes in there. So you can get, give them any function you want. Um, uh, so, so to say, you can also use them for uh, integration into the genome, but this is also something special I would explain later on. Okay, so just um, an overview again for, for every level. So we are assembling level zero for in the level zero uh, reaction. We're putting them together in level one, and then we can assemble level two multigene plasmids uh, afterwards and this now it's time for for questions and again and i saw i see one question from tu delft uh, why did we select on bsa1 and bsmb1 mm -hmm. in that order okay so the the the, the reason for that is that um, we want to follow the existing standard and there's the spider rig standard for uh for idram and it says that the level one assembly is in like every in every Moclo toolbox I am aware of. It's BSA one, and uh, that's why we want to be compatible with that. And therefore, uh, we we have the same fusion sites and the BSA one to just exchange parts with uh, other labs. And the BSMB one is sometimes exchanged in some toolboxes with uh, BPI one. And uh, but this is uh, just on the on the purpose. But you can decide on that, for example, um, 
for some tool toolboxes where you want to prevent uh, that your parts have this this illegal restriction site um, to to the enzyme which has like uh, let the, the less um, how can I explain that uh, that for example if you want to do a toolbox for mitochondria and you just then you just look on uh, on the the parts you want to create and if they have more BSMB1 uh, or more BPI1 then you decide on the one which has less of the illegal restriction site but general in general we want to follow the standard which is in existing and that's why we decided on the, that order okay so next question uh, what are the insulator connectors okay so uh, the, the idea between the insulator collectors was that uh, we saw a lot of uh, read through uh, uh, through the through the transcription units, and what we did is uh, we used the software, which can create um, a neutral DNA, which is not expressing or have an effect on uh, gene expression, and that was quite hard, actually, in the end, to get this neutral DNA. And then we put uh, two connectors in front one in front, one in, uh, in, in the end of this neutral DNA. And then we have something like space and something which is stop stopping transcription again. And then we tested them in, in Bibrio last year and also in E. coli afterwards. And uh, actually some of them didn't work and we don't know why, but we have a set now which is fine, which is really insulating your transcription units um, uh, if you need that. Okay, how do you get rid of superfold G3 when assembling level one transcription units? So the, the, the superfolded GFP is uh, replaced by, by uh, ah, why do you level, for level one there is no uh, GFP anymore. So for level zero, you have this GFP. I will go to that slide. You have this GFP and this is replaced by your level zero part, let's say a promoter. And for the level one, you have this RFP and you replace that by, for example, promoter, RBS, and um, uh, all the parts you wanna assemble. And if everything is assembled correct, the RFP is automatically gone after your assembly. So you don't have to get rid of it. I hope this answers your question. If not, just uh, write again into the Q&A. How did you design M1, M2, M3 overlaps? Are there just random sequences different from other standards or they they have something of particular? Ah, that's a very good question. So we asked ourselves, how can we design new, new sequences? And actually, this is not so easy because you don't, don't want to like uh, interact with all your sequences. And that's why we created a software where we like avoid new restriction sites where we uh, avoid uh, like uh, where we avoid that the parts are very very similar and also included some other design features and we also have that uh, uh, on our old week uh, website and um, yeah so uh, actually we we designed them for like best assembly for in that case I hope uh, this helps as an expl explanation. So avoid uh, unwanted cutting or like new restriction sites, uh, avoid um, and avoid like a similarity to other, to other, transcript, uh, to other um, uh, overlaps. Next question, how many TUs can you stitch together? So this is a good question and uh, there's no exact answer to that so um me personally i i, I did uh seven or eight so and it, and it it depends on the connectors you have available so people like uh the the, the neb and the and the companies like ginkgo have create have published something that you can stitch together to it to uh, 24 parts and uh, I haven't tried with like whole transcription units, but um, uh, I could imagine that it's just an, uh, yeah, a way of, or like a problem of uh, efficiency. So 
probably you can stitch together a lot more than six, like 10 or something like that. But at some point it gets less efficient and therefore you need better competent cells, better enzyme mixtures and something like that. But um, there's also a way of uh, uh, stitching together even more parts. And therefore we are also, or I know people which are working on level three kind of, and then you can stitch together level two uh, plasmids and then like the, the, num the number is almost infinite. So even if you want to assemble, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and uh, more more genes, you can use that as a technique. And then it's just by creating new connectors to, to do that. Okay, I hope this answers your question. Uh, I meant, how did you get them? Like, how do you decide that they can behave insulators, connectors, like some palindromic or something? Um, uh, so they behave like insulators by having some space between your transcription units and uh, through additional terminators that the transcription is stopped. Perhaps you, you have something different in mind as, uh, when we talk about insulators, but we just intended to stop unwanted gene expression. Okay. Doesn't inverting the transcription already already helping reduce the gene expression noise or is read through transcription still a problem? Yes, it definitely uh, hmm. reduces the noise uh, heavily and this helps a lot and we saw that. But actually we saw very, very strange things and I think this is not published at all that uh, if you stitch together, for example, five um, transcription units that you have like at one position, like the expression is very, very low, and and at one and another position is very, very high, and um, yeah, you can uh, like tinker around with all the elements and all the tools we have to get to your results. So you're right, you're reducing it, but perhaps the applications where you need uh, these specific insulators, and for us, it helps a lot for some applications. To have them. Okay. Is there any uh, more questions? Okay. I guess this is this is fine, right? Yeah. Then we would uh, continue with the lab part, uh, which is not too long, but. Um, uh, let's get started. Uh, so the golden gate in your lab, how does it work actually uh, in your hands? So uh, what people are most of the times confused about that they are really just pipetting level zero plasmids together. That's not something you're used to. Usually you are doing something like uh, digesting, putting something on an electrophoresis gel and cutting out and something like that, and you are not doing something like that at all. So you're pipetting together all your level zero parts in one part. You're adding uh, a buffer, which is a T4 ligase buffer in most of the cases. You're adding uh, your specific uh, restriction enzyme, for example, BSA1 or BSMB1, and the T4 ligase or T7 ligase. So there are advantages for both ligases. But um, yeah, I could explain it, but uh, it's not so important for now. And then you're putting, so you're putting all this together, and then you put it into this thermocycler. And there are different protocols out there, and it depends on on your application, and on your on how many parts you want to assemble. And we have provided you with a list of different protocols in the, in the uh, resource list here. So. You, just check it out. Um, what most people are doing is just an overnight uh, reaction that you uh, like start the thermocycle in the evening and just have it done in the morning uh, for really high complex um, uh, uh, high complex assemblies. So let's get through. Uh, let's get through this uh, thermocycler protocol, what each temperature means, that you can understand the 
the importance of that. So step one is 37 degrees for two minutes, which is the optimal temperature for the restriction enzyme. There, the restriction enzyme cuts all your level zero parts. And you have step two at 16 degrees, which is useful for the, or which is the, the, the step for the ligase, just five minutes. And there the ligase has uh, the optimal temperature to work. And you're cycling this, uh, this, this part up to 50 times. So you can reduce that to 24 times, uh, 25 times, of course. But for 50 times, you increase the efficiency because every time you uh, cut and ligate, the, uh, after correct assembly, the recognition side is gone. So it's just a statistical effect that you increase your chance that you have the right construct is assembled. And um, that's something uh, something you can play around with. So uh, if you have like just an easy assembler, just reduce the uh, cycles. And if you have like a super high complex assembly, then uh, uh, use that number. And step three is 50 degrees. And that's due to um, uh, that 50 degrees, the, en the restriction enzyme is still active, the ligase not. And that's for like all the non-assembled parts, for example, the new resistance part, the ampicillin resistance, is cutting the, the non-digested or the non-assembled plasmids into linear. And if you transform them, you reduce the background of uh, the uh, just re-ligated backbone in that case. And afterwards, in step four, you just heat inactivating the enzymes in order to, uh, yeah, kill the enzymes that they are not doing anything more anymore. And there are also like super fast protocols out there and you can try them if they work for you, perfect. And um, yeah, but this is just uh, tinkering around uh, for your ap specific application. Okay. Um, the next part, of course, is uh, that you are transforming um, transforming your um, mixture, your Golden Gate mixture into E. coli. And therefore, the efficiency of your competent cells um, for level zero, if you're just assembling your part into the acceptor vector, the, the efficiency is not so critical. So it's just a two-part assembly. But for level one, or like complex level two assemblies, where you have many fragments, the transformation efficiency is really crucial. So if you have good competent cells, you will have a lot of more comp, uh, colonies. And sometimes um, your problems in the lab can be just due to the competent cells which you are working with. Uh, then you are transforming two to five microliters of each assembly. I wouldn't uh, exceed this number because uh, you don't want to bother your competent cells. And then you do, do a normal transformation, the normal transformation protocol. But I would recommend to do uh, one hour uh, recovery for ampicillin and at least two hours for clonamycin and clonfinical to increase your efficiency for your for your transformation. Uh, for picking the colonies, uh, just to uh, I repeat that uh, for a moment, uh, for level zero, you're picking the white colonies and the GFP cassette it uh, allows you to select that the green colonies are wrong. For level one and level two, uh, uh, it's uh, almost the same. You should pick the white colonies and uh, the red colonies are wrong. So you can use that for uh, yeah, increasing your chance that that you pick the right colonies. And uh, actually, for, le for example, for level zero assembly, it's like the efficiency is super high and you have like almost uh hundred percent efficiency on that and uh yeah so if you have any problems we have the slack channel let's discuss that and or we can also try to optimize the new protocol together um that we have like a fast but reliable phone gate protocol just the last uh, slide for the lab part which is automation <laughs> sorry um, and uh, I just want to uh, there's one correction 
but shouldn't it be mentioned the use of BSMV1 is ESO schizomer only works at 50. Ah, okay. There, there, there's one correction which is uh, quite correct. So, um, so most of the times um, we are using, or like uh, for now, I'm using uh, the, the NEB enzymes because NEB has published a paper where they optimized the T4 ligase, the BSA1, which is the new version, the BSA1 V2, and the ESP3 one. So these are the isoschizomer, and they specifically engineered them for Golden Gate assembly, and everything works at 37 degree. And also the BSMV1. Uh, the, the problem with BSMV1 is actually a, a high temperature enzyme, but the people anyway used uh, almost every time 37 degrees. Sometimes they increase the temperature to 42 degrees, but they never work at the actual temperature of 55 degrees. So the correction is, uh, it's true, you have to keep that in mind, but never use 55 degrees, otherwise you will kill your ligase. And that's that's why NEB worked very hard on bringing out this isoschizomer is ESP3-1. ESP okay. Uh, then, uh, just to the last slide, and then we come to the questions. Uh, automation for your uh, Moclo or Golden Gate. So there are many ways to automate that, and I just want to uh, highlight two two ways of do that. So actually, uh, because you don't need uh, all the purification, all the gel part in your cloning cycle, you just pipetting together uh, basic parts or transcription units, right? So you can automate that by uh, like pipetting robots and uh, one very good example what the people are using in industry at companies like Ginkgo or um, also in some labs uh, um, is the Echo 525 and uh, this is a, a, a robot which can transfer nanoliter droplets in multi well plates by acoustic wavelengths so it's shooting from a bottom plate to a uh, uh, upside down uh, uh, well plate uh, on top and therefore you can reduce your reaction mixture to one or two microliters therefore save parts save enzymes and increase your throughput heavily so that you can do 384 assemblies in, in like uh, a few minutes but of course this is not very affordable and very expensive and um, therefore, there's also a nice solution for item teams, which is the OpenTron OT2, which is the most affordable uh, uh, lab robot you, I can think of or I'm aware of. And um, they they also giving uh, 10 robots to, to item teams every year. And for example, our last year, item Marburg team also uh, developed a software you, where you just can click the parts you want to assemble, and this would uh, uh, like make a pipetting protocol uh, for the robot, so uh, that you don't have to think of like every well. Uh, you have your parts, in, but you like I have a defined uh, well plate with your library of parts, and you done it, then you're just clicking on the on your desktop which parts you want to assemble, and uh, the computer is. Is, is doing uh, a protocol, a pipetting scheme for your for your Obentron. And also the, this year's team is uh, heavily developed, developing this further. And um, I think this is one of the best examples for uh, using automation in, in your workflow because like pipetting together uh, 10 uh, parts for every assemble, for example, or 11 parts and all the enzymes, uh, can be confusing and uh, to like keep track of all your assembles, it's easier uh, that a robot is doing that if you can afford it. Okay, for now, this is, uh, I would come back to, to all the questions and uh, let's see what we have here. Uh, is there any list of all the parts presented in the Marble Collection? Of course. So. Um, we have um, uh, our website, and I can also we can also post a link uh, into into in the into this uh, chat 
that um, that you have the marble collection, all the parts and uh, list of the, that. Second question, is the software available? Yes, it is. You can download it, it from uh, from our old website. It's partially MATLAB and partially Python based. So not like, yeah. So we were, were not like the perfect programmer, but we wanted to have the solution. But uh, we will try this year to like combine that and uh, give you a better solution for that than last year. So, but you can download it, you, you can do, use it, but then you have to adapt it to your specific library you have on your bench or in your robot. But uh, feel free to, to, to download that. Okay. So for now, it seems that we don't have any questions anymore, right? So it's time for a uh, five or ten, five minute break, and let's uh, come. Let's uh, have a break and come back in five minutes.
Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, let's come back to the webinar. And there was one uh, question during the break. And I just wanted to make sure that everyone gets it. So there's a question, why to destroy the construct in each cycle which you made, the, uh, which you made in the previous cycle? So actually, you don't destroy your construct at all. So uh, the first step is, as I said, for cutting cutting out and the, the thing is that after cutting and tr successful ligating the cutting side of your bsa enzyme is gone afterwards so as you can see on that picture just imagine the right part is the the part you want to assemble and then you have the same thing on the left side in a mirrored way and then you are losing the recognition side of uh, your enzyme so afterwards you do you don't have a cut anymore um for your cloning so you are not destroying that because if you successfully uh, ligated two parts you are you have you don't have any bsa one cut site anymore so this is why you are not destroying it so ju just the construct which ha uh, are not ligated into the final construct have a recognition site and therefore, you're increasing your efficiency by um, by cutting again in step one. So your your final construct are not destroyed, are not cutted, but the uh, the uh, non-assembled parts they are definitely cutted. Okay, I hope this answers your question. Just just give uh, feedback on that if you don't get it, and. Um, yeah um now i want to come to the practical part and uh, therefore i would like to uh, uh, share my screen with you i hope this works so uh in uh in the beginning i will just use uh genius uh, but i will also ah there's a question okay sorry sorry but what what about the inverting or keeping the recognition side Ah, okay. So what? So actually, I will explain uh, the the invert the the, the recognition side keeping uh, application for um, uh, for 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 a specific application in the practical part. So stay tuned to, to for for that. So in most of the cases, you are not using the keeping. Uh, keeping way of uh, the recognition side and for inverting um, you're also losing the, the recognition side so it's the same principle I explained uh, before what can I use the shorter time reg use the shorter time reaction ah um, the, you, you can use the shorter time reaction for uh, for example level zero parts because there you have just a uh, uh, two two part assembly or if you have a la level one assembly which is uh, not composed of 10 parts or something like that i also used the shorter time already for uh, i don't know for example eight parts but this doesn't work every time so then your efficiency is decreased but this could work for you in in some cases so just try out and uh, yeah if this works for you okay so I hope you can see my screen. As I said, um, uh, I will start with Genius, but I also give some other examples what you can, uh, where you can use Genius uh, uh, in, uh, in, in softwares. And um, uh, I, I guess we, uh, we can't do it like that, that you can uh, like click by, for like every step or that everyone can follow, but I will try my best uh, to a a explain like every step um, uh, as detailed as possible. But uh, I think we don't have time to like, uh, yeah, get to a point that everyone can click uh, at the same speed as we do it here in the webinar. The stuff, but uh, you can also just follow my ex explanation and, and, and try it afterwards, and then we will help you by the Slack channel, if you have any problems uh, uh, 
with that. So you can use, uh, for example, the Genius Trial version for 14 days or like other software I will explain later on uh, to uh, try the same thing I'm explaining here. So you can try to follow, but perhaps it's a little bit too fast because you don't know the software well. And uh, but just try to uh, to get or grab as much as possible. So first of all, I'm here in Genius, and uh, I have my different Golden Gate Level Zero parts here. And um, just to uh, to uh, explain you again uh, what we have, for example. Uh, here I'm. I have the plastics of the yeast toolbox, and for example, here you can see the the promoter. The green part is a promoter, and to explain it on the on the sequence level again, uh, just briefly. So then, you can see that we we have the uh, that that we have the BSA one cutting side uh, next to the part, and th the this part is the recognition side of the BSA1 and it cuts with the offset of one and creates this sticky end and then you can assemble for example the promoter to the, the part on the left side next to it by having the same uh, four base per overhang and this is done um, for uh, all the uh, for all the Assemblies. Uh, I just have to make a quick thing, which you don't have to uh, keep track of, but I need it for for like faster, uh, faster way of working here. Um, so as I said, you don't need that. Um, okay. So now the software can also show us. Okay, BSA one is cutting here, and um, it will cut. In that way, so in most of the softwares I'm aware of for assembling uh, assembling parts, and this is not just uh, advertisement for for this software, but uh, just to show you that it can be very easily. Uh, usually, you would think of okay, I have to digest all the parts and ligate them together so that we can uh, stick them together in a level one assembly, but actually. Uh, Genius has a nice solution for that, and you are just uh, uh, like uh, marking every part, and then it ha you have the function cloning up up there, and then there it says Golden Gate Type 2S cloning, and if you click on that, you have like several options. If you want to use the backbone, and you can say no, and which enzyme you 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 would like to use, and the 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 first one is of course BSA1. And if you want to circularize the product, and we say yes because we have the plasmid at the end, and if every like uh, four base pair overhang is green, then uh, the the assembly is correct. And if not, there's also the auto arrange function uh, on on the bottom left side. And then uh, Genius recognizes all the the uh, BSA uh, cutting sites and will uh, order them in the right order. And down there, you can also use uh, a primer function that it creates some primers, but we don't want to want we don't want that that one. And if you click on OK, it just takes a second, and it assembles us the the whole level uh, one uh, plasmid in one click. So this is a huge advantage uh, compared to other cloning softwares I'm aware of. So. Um, just uh, in, in silico assembly in a, in a second. So uh, that you can also use in, in, in your projects and in, in your toolboxes. You just have to create all your level zero parts and you can also uh, use that function for level zero. But we will go through the whole cloning cycle in a minute. Just a few comments. What you can also see is the, the marble toolbox, uh, which I all also um, put together for you to, to have them as files, uh, as Fastmit files. And uh, the yeast toolbox, if people of you are working with yeast, uh, you can uh, buy that toolbox uh, at Edgene. And these are the, the Plasmid files of it. Then we have a folder for the entry vector, which I talked about uh, before. 
and we will use that in uh, in a bit. And then I created already some folders for for the webinar now. And then there's a folder Marboard overhangs. So if you want to create a new uh, a new part, then you usually do it by a PCR or DNA synthesis. And then you have to add the special overhangs. And uh, let's go to the, for example, the plant standard overhangs. And then uh, you have a number in the beginning. And this one says for which p position you want to uh, create a new part. For example, promoter to promoter forward. Then you're adding this uh, overhang to your primer on the, in the forward primer on the left side. And for reverse, of course, you have to reverse complement that sequence by, for example, in this software, just uh, click on the right and uh, copy reverse complement. And then you can use that library of overhangs to just copy paste it to your primers to create this specific part via PCR, for example. Uh, then I have a folder with uh, at the left side uh, for advanced Golden Gate features. And this is just for, for people who already used uh, Golden Gate. And perhaps we will come to that in the end if you are interested, but this is really like uh, advantage, advantage um, stuff. But let's go through the basic stuff in the beginning. Okay, so there's a folder which says level zero. And um, if you click on that, uh, you have one plasmid inside there, which has a cherry. And I already made two primers, but actually, it's just the binding part of your primer, so as you would design it for your construct. And as I explained before, you have to add the right overhangs to your primers. So uh, then I go to my overhangs, and I already marked them with different colors, so for forward and reverse, because I want to create an m which is a coding region. I add this to my primers, so just copy with a normal uh, control uh, C, control C and then go to your primer again, put it in the beginning, and then the program asks you if we really want to edit uh, your, your sequence and you allow that, and then you have uh, your, your overhang in the beginning, and you, you just save that, and then you go to the, to the overhangs again and do that for the reverse, uh, for the reverse primer by clicking with right, copy reverse complement and add it to your reverse primer. I hope I did it right now. It's uh, just to make sure copy reverse complement and uh, paste. I hope you could follow. I'm just trying something if I did, did right. Yeah. Okay. Now you have your primers and you have your template, and you can use that in, in this software to uh, do a in silico PCR. So let's go to the plasmid on top of it and go to primers in to on top of it in the toolbar and test with safe primers. There's one option. And then you, it asks which primers should I use. And uh, then you have to go to the right folder where we are and say, OK, we want to use these both both primers by holding control. And then you can just click on OK. And it tries to uh, find the primers on your contract and found it in my case. And I also hope uh, that uh, uh, that uh, yeah, that it works. And uh, now we can extract that PCR product out of this plasmid. So just click on the plasmid again, use primers in the on top of the toolbar, extract PCR product. And then you can use reverse mcherry, forward mcherry to extract it. And then we have our PCR product with the, the overhang we added to our primers uh, on there. and now we can use that PCR product to do our level zero golden gate, which is uh, putting it into the universal acceptor vector, which you can find also in this folder. So universal acceptor vector. So you mark both the PCR product 
and the universal acceptor vector and use cloning golden gate reaction and this time we have to switch the enzyme between bsa1 to bsmb1 and now uh, ah, yeah. we have to use this auto range but because it didn't recognize uh, the right order in the beginning but then it works for me and this is the way of doing a level zero so if you click on okay we have um, our level zero plasmid assembled we have the mcherry in our universal acceptor vector and we have our created our first part i'm just renaming it by clicking with the right edit name and say level uh, zero M cherry, whatever you want. Okay. Um, now we have a, a part, but actually we want to also assemble a transcription unit. So just uh, drag and drop, drop it to, to the level 1.1 1 .1 folder, which I created on the left side. And then we have uh, all the parts already prepared you need for the level one assembly. Uh, in that in that folder and then you just mark all the all the parts together use the function cloning golden gate and uh, now we have to select bsa1 again because we are doing a, a level one assembly and then it recognizes every uh, recognition side which is right which looks perfect and then if you click on OK, it just assembles you the level one, uh, your level one plasmid with your M cherry as a level zero part in there, as you can see it here. So just rename it to to, to avoid confusion. Level one point one, and to save some time, I already prepared you folders for like all the other level one plasmids. You just have to go through this this folder, mark every part, click on cloning, golden gate, and every time the same. Just uh, OK. Uh, and then we have another level one assembly. Edit the name, 1.2. Um, yeah, the same as I said for the last one. Cloning, Golden Gate, again, everything is right, the right order. And then we created three level uh, uh, one parts, which are three genes we, which we want to express. And uh, now, as I said, we want to create a level two pl uh, plasmid to, to round up the, the whole uh, workflow and therefore we have to copy all our uh, level one parts into one folder or uh, that's actually this just makes it easier so I just drag and drop them into the level two folder to have them uh, yeah at the same place and if I go there I already prepared you the folder with the cut resistance part and uh, uh, then it's the same as before, just mark them all, cloning, golden gate, and for level two, we have to switch again to BSMB1. And uh, uh, if you uh, say OK, you have in five minutes or less, I don't know how long this took now, you have assembled the whole uh, pathway or the whole uh, three gene plasmids uh, in silico. We have the uh, the nanolog, the M cherry, and the super full GFP assembled into one plasmid uh, within the software. And um, yeah, so you can do that for for your project or your parts. And if you have questions on that, yeah, just write in the, in our Slack channel, with, with, which which we have provided in this uh, in this uh, in this webinar here, and we will uh, help you or guide through. Uh, for for your cloning application or for your project, and um, just uh, to go back one step, 
So what did we do here in the what level one assembles? So we had like every part. So you also here, you can see the number here. Uh, for example, one, two to four, five, six, seven, eight. So you're just connecting one to eight every time. And we were using these connectors. So uh, this is something you have to take care of uh, for for assembling multi-team constructs. And uh, in case of um, uh, of three genes you want to assemble, um, we have uh, yeah spe some special connectors to use, for example. So in the first uh, transcription unit, we used, for example, the three prime connector one because of the first transcription unit, uh, which you can see here in the name, three prime connector one. And uh, this is fitting to the second uh, transcription unit, which says five prime connector two. So these parts, these connectors stitched together by the specific recognition site, which we are creating by the BSMB1 in our connector. So the BSMB1 is in our connectors and creates a specific level two fusion sites afterwards to connect uh, several transcription units. And uh, if someone has the question uh, how this works um, or how do, do we decide on that, uh, we cho chose the same fusion sites as in level one because it doesn't matter because we already lost the cutting side. So, but now there are some questions I saw. And why is the marble collection using B1 as part of the promoter and not the original A2, A, A1, A2, A3? Uh, okay, so um, again, this is, uh, uh, I know what you mean. So if I go back to uh, to the slide where it shows that. Perhaps I can push that to you as, as a slide. Um, for promoters, we are actually using A1 to A3. I don't know if we have like a mistake in one of our slides. I hope not. But we are using the standard A1 to A3. So sorry for, for some confusion if there's some uh, wrong slide or uh, wrong image, but we are keeping the standard and using exactly the, those fusion sites. Ah, okay, so I got a hint of my, of my team. So um, yeah, so this is actually the 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 design for the um, for the uh, for the plant people and plant people have the five frame UTR and uh, this is really crucial for, for expression and also in for example climate metamonas and that's why we have the five frame UTR and therefore uh, yeah the, the RBS starts uh, from B1 to B2 or is, is, uh, is uh, like have, has this overhangs and you don't need that in bacterial chassis and then you have um, the promoter for, for one to four, the RBS from, from four to six. And um, yeah, we keeping the standard uh, which is uh, set by iGEM. And you can also find that on the fight bricks page which we'll post again into the Slack channel to make that a little bit more clear. My bad. I saw it on the marble collection, or on the uh, marble collection overview. Okay, then it's fine, right? Um, okay. Uh, if you can see my screen again, just to to make it sure. So for for connectors, you have the BSMB1 con in your connectors, which is creating level two fusion sites, which you can use to order your your transcription units and to create for example different orders you're just choosing different connectors for your level one uh, assembly so by designing that you can choose the order design the order uh, of uh, your choice okay are there any questions to the general workflow from level zero level one 
level two. Otherwise, I would just mention two more softwares. Um, one of them, I hope I can put them here, is the Dulix software. Um, and Dulix has developed um, also a workflow for um, for Biobrick type 2S subcloning. And um, I guess we don't have time to, to show like every detail on that, but they also containing the standard fusion sites and they also have like an uh, AI based uh, cloning system, which you can use to just uh, let your computer design uh, your, your, your bricks. And this is especially useful for starting your toolbox, in my opinion, when I tested it. Uh, actually, the, the Genius software, which I showed you, is not free. Uh, so you're just using the, the trial version instead, I guess. Uh, our team got it by just asking the company for uh, free versions for iGEM. And uh, therefore, I want to mention one other software, which is the, the Benchling. Benchling is a company origin from, uh, from iGEM. And um, uh, it also has uh, assembly wizard f uh, function where you can choose the golden gate. And uh, then you can create an uh, uh, assembly also. And this Benchling software, as I hopefully said, is also uh, free, for especially for iGEM people. And um, yeah, you can use that uh, to have like an online cloning program software for your project. But actually, to be honest, my opinion is that the, the, the assembly of parts is not super optimal because you you have the you have to stitch together part by part for for benchling in my as as i as far as i know so perhaps there's a better solution for that but i haven't found it yet so this are uh, so for sure you can also use i don't know other uh, cloning software and it probably also works so i'm not saying uh, these uh, three softwares are the only ones which you can use for the Golden Gate Assembly. You can also use Snapgene or whatever you have in your team. But I just wanted to show you one example, uh, which where I'm uh, aware of that, that it works and where of I also have some experience on, on working with so that I can teach you something. Um, okay. Um, if you w want, we can go through the advanced stuff but uh, don't, uh, yeah, don't, uh, it's not too bad if you don't get like every point of it because it's quite harsh. And I've collected some, uh, some advanced stuff. Uh, perhaps I just uh, uh, give you an overview. So first of all, the one of the special applications I mentioned are the space holders and there what we did there, and that's a, that's kind of a special part of uh, iGEM Marburg. Uh, we created parts which have um, an inverted um, recognition site. And why do we do that? So the idea is to uh, to to have a part which we can cut out afterwards after after our uh, assembly. For example, having a space holder so so we call them, uh, at the coding region uh, for your gene, putting the space holder, which is a G GFP expression unit in the beginning to, to uh, uh, screen for them. And this uh, space holder uh, or this expression unit has an inverted BSA1 side and it cuts outside, which you can see here. And then if you assemble it, uh, you can cut out the GFP expression unit as it is done, for example, in your entry vector. So it's the same principle as in your entry vector, but here we are doing that after an assembly. So for example, you want to screen a promoter library or a, a library of, I don't know, uh, RNA based uh, or like special promoters, whatever you want. And you don't want to assemble every time uh, like the whole transcription unit. Then you just put a space holder in that position and we already created them for every position in our team. And then 
you can replace that in a second cloning cycle by using BSA1 again and uh, screening for the non green colonies afterwards. And the only w thing you have to uh, uh, be careful with, you ca don't, uh, in most of the programs I know, you can't use the normal golden gate function because the, the, the program says, okay, no, that, that's wrong. You can't do that in, in that case because you have an inverted uh, recognition site. Therefore, you have to do it in a classical way by just uh, cutting and ligating all the, the parts together. And just an example, I, I have already prepared the digested parts and just uh, say uh, ligate sequences and uh, then, um, then you can also assemble it by your program. And then you have something like, for example, in my case, I have promoter set, and then I have the, the GFP expression space holder, and then terminator and so on. So I can replace that JFP space holder afterwards for my specific application. Something completely new, which hasn't been done by any toolbox before, are the operon connectors. I don't want to uh, go into detail, but what we did here is uh, that we are extending the connectors by the promoter position, for example, and the terminator con uh, position. And therefore, we can skip promoters and co connect, uh, terminators. And therefore, we can build the classical bacterial operons. And uh, then you can have, for example, in your first transcription unit, promoter, but skip the terminator. In the second transcription unit, skip the promoter and uh, whatever you want. Uh, keep the terminator and therefore uh, do like multi cistron expression elements within the Golden Gate framework. So that's something new we will uh, put on our wiki on this year uh, in the uh, Idram Marburg. Okay, um, something which is a little bit uh, not so easy is if you want to create new um, connectors, because the problem is a connector has a BSMB1 cut site, right? And if you want to create new connectors, the problem is that for the assembly of level zero, you also need BSMB1. So you would cut off the BSMB1 in your connector. And we came up with a solution where we, uh, which is a little bit hard to understand, uh, perhaps you just draw it on a paper to understand it, uh, that we put a BSA1 cut site out there, which creates the same four base pair recognition site as the entry vector with BSMB1. And then we can ligate them together, although we are cutting with two different enzymes. And uh, that's a way we're preventing or like, uh, uh, yeah, preventing the BSMB1 cut side to be to be cutted, uh, and we can keep it. Uh, if you have questions on that, just answer in the Slack channel. And the most ambitious part is uh, something like Scarless Golden Gate or Golden Gate Mutagenesis, and this is useful for. I just I don't. I uh, want to explain it into detail, but if you have, for example, a part or a genome sequence which has an illegal cut site within the gene, and you don't want to spend money on, on gene synthesis or like uh, like time-consuming uh, other mutagenesis protocol, we did developed something called uh, Golden Gate mutagenesis. And this works like uh, that you are creating primers at that cut site and you can try that after your after this workshop and um, they bind uh, like around this cut site in a specific way and um, therefore we exchanging one base pair of this uh, BSA1 cutting site to to uh, uh, like kill that cut site and uh, to to domesticate that part and you Afterwards, you're just uh, pipetting together both PCR products um, together, which have a BSMB1 cut site at each primer, for example, here. And then you are doing a level zero uh, um, uh, golden gate with uh, not just uh, this one insert, one ba uh, backbone, but 
with uh, two PCR products, which are uh, correcting or killing the, the restriction site. Or if you want to do a mutagenesis for an enzyme or something like that. But I guess this is better to understand uh, if you go uh, slowly into that. And you can try that with this example. So I created the primers for you in that folder, which are already done. So you just do the, 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 the PCRs on that uh, template and put it with a golden gate reaction into the acceptor vector and you will see how this works. So this is a method which is very useful in, in some projects if you want to adapt your project or your parts into a golden gate toolbox. Okay, let's come back to some questions. There's one question uh, okay, sorry, couldn't get the Golden Gate mutagenesis part. Uh, yeah, so um, I can totally understand that. So this is quite harsh. So um, yeah, so let's say you want to uh, have that part as a level zero part in your acceptor vector, but you have this illegal BSA1 cut set which you want to uh, do a mutagenesis on, and you don't want to uh, just uh, do the level zero uh, assembly and then muta mutagenesis it. But you can do that in one step by designing primers where you have like one base pair uh, different uh, to kill the cut side. And um, additionally, we're adding BSMV1 cut side to every primer for, for the mutagenesis in the beginning. And because the the, the the enzyme cut site is a uh, recognition site is cut off after the assembly. You you have a scarless assembly assembly of of your part. So as I said, I, I can also do it here just to show you. Um, so I did the PCRs and then extract PCR product for primer rever reverse mutagenesis uh, extract. Uh, primer base pairs and also extract uh, the forward mutagenesis reverse uh, reverse primer and then we have uh, two uh, PCR products and what you can see here is that we added BSMB1 in the middle of the gene but we are doing a scarless assembly by having these for base pairs as uh, uh, as our assembly, which are already in the in the, for example, enzyme gene. By just ed exchanging one base pair for the BSA one cut site, we kill the, the cut site, and then we can just combine them, the two PCRs and the acceptor vector, in a Golden Gate reaction. Uh, and we will have our enzyme without any cut site, as you can see. So just try it on your own and um, uh, ask us in the Q&A, uh, not in the Q&A, in the Slack channel. And if we can also go through it uh, if you need some help for your own design uh, in the future. Are there any more questions? Seems not. Okay, so I guess uh, you will receive an email from my team uh, either today or tomorrow, and we will ask for your opinion or your feedback or some additional questions or something like that, and also uh, something we could improve, and just letting us know that we can improve it for the, the further webinars we are giving. And also, if you need something uh, from us, just tell us. And I hope uh, you learned something. If not, <laughs> I'm very, very sorry. And uh, yeah, uh, I hope I could, I could convince you that Golden Gate is, for some applications, a really good uh, method. Perhaps not for every application you have in mind in, in all your projects, but uh, yeah, uh, perhaps we will see much more Gold Gate teams in, in iDRAM. 
and uh yeah okay have a nice day and bye